Well, here we are, uh, the first episode of In the Isle, sitting between Swiss Miss Milk Chocolate Cafe Bustello and Prego flavored with meat sauce. It's Dan Lamord and Chad Pyram. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I ended on the flavored with meat. Prego with meat sauce, isn't that? <laughs> That's like... an awful way to describe meat sauce. Flavored with meat. Right. What yeah. else would it be flavored with? Yeah. What in a. <laughs> Well, this is it. Yeah. Where this is our uh, this is our NPR tiny desk. Yeah. And I'm glad we finally cameras just make sense because there's only so much talking about it that you can do before you're like, no, really, I swear I'm actually between Alfredo sauce and Reese's peanut butter. Yeah. I mean, also, none of which we have sponsors for, but hopefully we don't hear from their attorneys. Right. You, wouldn't it be great if we had to like we have the beautiful, like colorful visual behind us and then we just got to blur it all out. <laughs> <laughs> this is something else. I mean, being uh, in. I used to stock these shelves as a kid, so it's very weird to be sitting here. Now, when right. your father is the own, like my father is the I was owner say, of this deli. T- tell us why we're even yeah, here. I mean, that would make sense. We're in West Bank Gourmet, New York City, Manhattan, on the floor of the deli because it's my father's deli. This is the deli I worked at when I was a kid, you know, 11 years old. Right. Stocking the shelves. Anytime your father owns a store and has you stock shelves... <sighs> That's him just being like, whatever you do, just don't fuck shit up. Man. Right, exactly. Just, get, here's the easy job. Right. And then one day became a delivery boy, you know. You worked your but, way up. Uh, it was hard. It was, a, it was a gruesome climb through the corporate ladder Don't you love Father's Deli. Don't you love how like the rules of like child labor don't exist when it's your own kid? They're no, kind of yeah, like, do whatever you want. Yeah, it's like, but officer, nepotism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I would just stock the shelves, and then eventually I was, I was the worst delivery boy. How old not were only was I a child, right. I was maybe you know, 12 when I started running deliveries, right. I was fat, and I was the only employee, the only delivery boy without a bicycle. Did you eat any of the food on the way there? Or All no? of the food. No, no. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be so hard. Thank God he doesn't serve French fries here. Right. I couldn't imagine having to deliver a bag of fries and not picking some out. Right. But it's like a bacon, egg, and cheese. How does one kind of eat a bacon, egg, and cheese? Right. Yeah, exactly. You, just have to be like, you either do it or you don't. It, it fell into someone's mouth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm the notorious worst delivery of all time. Around the corner, there's a building, one West Street. Probably shouldn't have given the actual address. But no, I let's he, do it. Go ahead. He lives there anymore. I'm running delivery. I got my hands full, so I got bags on my arms. I wouldn't really know where I was going, so I would like to have my hands with me. Because my uncle has the pizzeria across the street. Right. So when I was younger, I feel like him and my dad would have competitions, like who could get me more lost on deliveries. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just put it on here. So I wanted my hands. I mean, my earliest GPS was the dude who sold pretzels on the corner. Yeah. He'd be like, this fat kid again. I'd be like, sir, where's yeah. help me? Where's Comrade's Bank? <laughs> that's like, that's real old school parenting. Cause like nowadays, I feel like parents are like, I got to find my, you know, they like, they know where their kids are. They're tracking oh, their phones. That's the oldest school parenting. He would look at me and just trust that no one in New York wanted to kidnap that. <laughs> <laughs> so horrible. That's horrible, but it's true. He would look at me and be like, "No one, no. You could go out. It's thirty my minutes kid away. Is, my kid is pedophile proof. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was petty proof, petty proof. Sprayed you with pe- anti petty, yeah. um, diddle proof. How bad? But like, you never had to go too far. No, but the worst one ever was one of the closest deliveries right around the corner, one West Street. Right. I'm walking in with the bags on my hand. The elevator is closing, so I yell, oh, "Open the elevator! Open the elevator!" And s- it's just Zach and Cody. Remember the sweet life of Zach and Cody? Both of them are in the name? elevator? It wasn't both. <laughs> it was only one. I don't know their <laughs> names individually. I only know them as a unit. Yeah. That's also not their real names, by the way. It's that's, not their real names. That's name. the character. It's their characters. They're something Sprouse. But when yeah, I, still in a call, I right? only know them as a unit of Zach and Cody. So right. I say, hey, Zach and Cody, hold the elevator. And he looks at me and he's with his girlfriend at the time. They were only a couple years older. So they must have been 16, maybe. I was right. 14. And he goes, this one's just for us and starts making out with her and pushes me out of the elevator like while I'm getting close to power move. And I was like, fucking Zach and Cody, man. (laughs) And like they say, don't meet your heroes. And uh, he wasn't mine, but still a dick. Yeah, right. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Because you know how insulting that probably is for him to hear? Like, hey, Zach and Cody. That's yeah, because like, he was no. currently in that part of his life where he was trying to look smart, like he had a ponytail and bifocals. Oh, Jesus. It was whichever one went on to kind of look like Ben Franklin. Right. So I think it was just a real peg down for him to be like, oh, Zach and Cody. He's like, well, I have a ponytail and bifocals now. I don't live in a hotel. And then and so he just kicked you off the elevator. Yeah, it was kind of like a little just shove out. And like, it's probably the only when privacy- you're Zach and Cody... You don't need to shove someone hard because the overall 
thought of, am I getting pushed by Zach and Cody? Right. Outweighs the actual strength of the push. Right, because you're, in your mind, you're getting pushed by two yeah, people, apparently. Yeah, you're mentally apparently. falling as well. Yeah. You're like, I'm getting pushed by a Disney star? <laughs> what happened? Is Selena Gomez going to kick me in the shins next? I like how you're saying his, his, as if his full name, his first name, Zach, middle name, and last name, Cody. Yeah, first name ever, last name greatest. Exactly. Zach Pretty and much. Cody. What are they up to now? One of them's on a TV show. Yeah, one of them's doing well. The other one. I swear to God, the the goal of this podcast is to just get Zach and Cody in here. Either one. We, the goal would be to get both. So and they, find out which one actually did it. I was going to say, the goal would be to get both so they can both look at us and go, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> like what... I'm sitting here talking about the story multiple times in my life. There's a 0% chance they remember that. You're the third guy they did yeah, it to that, that was week. was a Tuesday afternoon right. for them. He was like, yeah, I don't even remember her name. You think I'm going to remember You're you? Right. What if he did remember that and he's like, oh, my God. Like, I've he's been like, looking elevator. for you for years to 20, apologize. 2008 elevator. Makes I, his amends to you. you. Yeah. But yeah, that's that was probably the worst delivery I ever went on. But then there was somewhere it would just I would get lost. And right. like GPS, I didn't have a phone back then as a kid. So you just hoped. Right. You just asked well, older people. Would you. So like if you deliver to an apartment. Would, the, would you give it to the doorman or would you bring it up to I the actual? I would bring it up. Really? Yeah, which always threw people off and it was like a fat kid. Yeah. <laughs> but it's got to be kind of nice. I mean, imagine you're like hung over or still high and like just a tiny fat kid delivers you a bacon egg Right, and you cheese. feel like you're like being punked by Andy yeah, Milanakis like, or something. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. I, I only want this delivery service. Did This was before Grubhub, DoorDash. This is when people had a call right. and I would answer the phone here, write down what they wanted and then deliver it. Get which it meant wrong. it was usually wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was one guy, he lived in the Ritz Carlton in the like one of the apartments that was like um, over a million a year for sure. Right. And he would just get six Dr. Peppers and two packs of Marlboro Lights delivered oh. like three times a week. That's wow. That's so That's, that's so, so money. gross. That's I so thought you were going to say two packs of ketchup. He would answer it in like a robe with his name on it. Did you ever get anyone like who answered it and you could like kind of see behind them that something weird was going on? Yeah, we had one here I can't go into many details because I think it's still ongoing. But right. It wasn't my story, but they also do apartment cleanings. And it wasn't this building. It was another building. My dad sent the worker up and the guy's entire house, floor, bed, couches covered with empty whippets, just cases of whippets. So much so that the woman was like, I don't even know what this is. Yeah, right. So she just left. Yeah. And they just left and they called him. They were like, we can't clean it. And he was like, what do you mean? They're like, dude, that's just a room full of narcotics. Yeah. Like, it's literally just a floor of drugs. And he was so shocked as to why they couldn't clean it. Yeah. Well, you can only buy those, I think, in bulk. But yeah, I'd never had, like, like any weird... I had one, like, where one time I opened the door and the woman was like, my daughter's auditioning for a play. And then they just started singing together. And I was like, ah, just take your bagel. Oh, I was, like, God. 13. That's and even like, at that point, I knew that I didn't want to deal with that bullshit. That's so brutal. That's yeah, so just, wrong. That's, like, to, to have to put you through that. I don't know. I hate people like that who are like, here, I'm, I think my kid's talented. Deal with it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My, I don't think my parents were ever like that. They were just like, my kid's embarrassing. Look at him go. Yeah, right. Like, I would dress up as Wind Santa. him up and watch him go. Dude, I would dress up as Santa in the summer. I would put socks Why? on my hand as gloves <laughs> and then just deliver presents. And my parents would allow that. Yeah, you were always a theatrical guy. I would go I into like. public in June dressed as Santa into like a store. And my parents would be like, that's just Dan. That's what he does. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know. Like, He's I was a special always, boy. I remember one Christmas, like, I asked for a hundred red balloons, and they took the easy way out and gave me a hundred red balloons instead of testing me for autism. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you want a hundred red balloons to pop it so you could have 99 red I balloons? Think I'm just a weirdo. I decided on the number and was like, I want a hundred red balloons. Yeah, it just made sense. At that moment, it, this, nothing makes sense. We're sitting on the floor of a deli next to. Max I think that, Black Angus B. I think that is how they test kids for certain things, by the way. They just ask them they when they're young. Balloons. They're like, hey, does 100 red balloons sound appealing? <laughs> and and like, if the kid's like, no, then they're like, well, you're good to go yeah. into society. And instead, I'm like, I'll take all 100. You're like, 100 tomorrow. of them? That's, yeah, that's the amount I want. Did um, you work in a deli, Jack? No, I'm you work in a pizzeria now. Though. I do. Uh, that's what I do, which is probably similar. Anything customer service, you kind of, you, you, you can customer relate. Customer service and italian -y. Yeah, exactly. You can sort of relate to... You never worked at the pizzeria, did you? Outside of running deliveries, no. So I would go over there to take oh, a okay. delivery. Wow, that's great. Your dad and your uncle were really double dipping on you. Yeah, literally. Like it was, I was child labor times too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, the guy you're delivering to is like, oh, you guys got pizza? You're like, no, that's another place I work for. <laughs> you're the, you were the first guy to like essentially do Uber and Lyft. Yeah, I was Uber Eats, except yeah. it was just like a chubby kid walks. Yeah. <laughs> Great app. That, yeah. The, you yeah. imagine that that's an option. Chubby you're like, kid walk. You know how when you like type in Lyft or like any app, it's like suggested similar ones. You like type in Uber Eats and it's underneath chubby kid yeah, walks. And the fun <laughs> one of this one is actually watching the time go down yeah. on how long it's going to deliver. Yeah, you're right. Like, oh, no, he added an extra five <laughs> minutes. Like, ah. Ah, but it's chubby kid. What walks. happened? Is he in traffic? No, he's walking. Yeah, he's wa- <laughs> like everyone freaks out when their Uber adds two minutes. Like it's just chubby walking, doing <laughs> yeah, chubby that's, walking. That's kind of what you pay for. Uh, I wonder no. if we could make this app a reality. How do you make child labor an app? I don't know, but we can dream, can't we? We you could know? dream. Wouldn't that be good? Um, yeah. So I mean, I didn't do. I didn't work in a uh, in a deli. My first my first job was kind of like I mean around the same age as you. I was like twelve. I was caddying at a golf club. A twelve-year-old caddy at a golf club. I would do it occasionally when they needed me. Which same thing. It's funny when you get these. I may be stoned, but interesting thought. Golf clubs, golf club. Huh. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> That's <laughs> stone knowledge. What if I was just like, yeah, yeah, it all makes sense now. And all I just heads leave. up. You're <laughs> like, I'm going back. Why'd I ever leave? Rain Man style It math. all pieces together. You're a caddy again tomorrow. Yeah, right. I'm like, but I have the upper hand this time. How many years of caddying did you do? <laughs> Seven, eight, maybe. I mean, I would just, it's a job you can only do during the summer. Something but it's good because you- on my back. What? Was it tomato soup? Oh, no. It's, it's a bowl <laughs> of noodle soup. Shrimp flavored. Is that your sponsor for today? Yeah, guys. We'll have to blur that out. Um, Shit. It's a name of a product that I'm not going to attempt to name because- just isn't something I can pronounce right without the, sounding bad. Right. Cancel yourself in your yeah, first episode. I can't, can't, I, Dan tries to read soup box, gets canceled <laughs> in process. <laughs> Pioneer of fat boy delivery <laughs> service. It's actually chubby kid walks. I'm sorry. I was really fat disrespectful. Fat boy is our competitor. <laughs> chubby kid was the original. Fat boy is the competitor. I still think chubby kid's the uh the That's the future, man. That's the future is chubby kid. You'll get your food to you within eight hours, but- People uh, delivering to people is really the worst because everyone, when they order a delivery, like the second you click send on the delivery to the second it's at your door, you feel like a king. Yeah. Because someone's on the way. A chariot's on the way to bring you something. So right. those people are not fun to deal with. If you think as, about- As someone who gets a lot of deliveries, I know I'm not fun to deal with. I'm the worst delivery to deliver to. Isn't it funny though? High. Like, Isn't it funny though how like- when you when you were a delivery kid, you were probably like, oh, I'll never treat people bad. And then as soon as you get a taste of power on the other end, you're just kind of like, yeah, you're like, oh, oh, bring me my now I leg. get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think the weirdest thing about deliveries for me as a stoner now is like sometimes I'll open the door too early into the delivery driver's walk to my house. So then I just need to stand there at the glass door awkwardly like. Yeah, it's like it's like reaching out for the handshake too early. Yeah, like he gets to the door and he says hello, but it's a formality. Yeah, like right. your eyes. We've met already we've already known ago. each other brutally yeah. for so long. Um, you have that really funny joke though about I'm gonna burn your material on our podcast. Hell yeah. But about how you know, the the delivery options when it's like additional notes. And oh you're yeah, like yeah. Very Still high. Delivery. I, I write to them that I'm high. Yeah. I no have eye contact. Told delivery please. boys like and females that I am high when they deliver to the house. Do they make eye contact? One woman one time, like, it was no joke. She was at the door. It was DoorDash, and she's calling my phone. I'm laying on the couch. There's a window next to the couch, so she could see me. <laughs> I'm laying on the couch, and she's calling. She's like, hey, I'm at the Wait, door. Sees you looking at the phone yeah, and then like, looking back at the TV. Me, so I'm, I'm just like, leave it. She goes, what, sir? I'm like, just leave it on the chair. Do I look like I could walk right now? I'm like, I'd be at the door if I could. I'm looking at you through the glass. And she just left it there and walked away. And eventually I got up and picked up my five guys. Right. That dinner tin. became breakfast after I'm you woke up. Now, so I got to get five guys in a tin. What you do you think mean? a burger is nice, like on a bun? Just imagine it coming in a fucking tin. What do you eat the tin? Why, do, why, does that, nah, why is the tin gluten chop free? Chop it up. Oh, okay. Because the bun has gluten on it. Oh. And gluten-free buns are sad. Yeah, they are. You're not you're not dairy-free, are you? No, I tried for a little while. When I was at the pizzeria, someone someone comes in and he goes, do you have gluten-free dough? And I'm like, no. But even if we did, what's the point? You know what I mean? Has, there's no good gluten-free pizza, is there? Mm, mm, that's that's where I think you're wrong, my friend. Who makes it? Washington, D.C. I had one on this. on a, I, got, I got off tour like two weeks ago. Yeah. I had the best gluten-free pizza in my life in Washington, D.C. Really? 
Yeah, so much so that I turned to the woman and I was like, is this really gluten free? Like, it was that good. <laughs> she was like, no, surprise. Yeah. There are some waiters who will like fuck with me and they'll be like, ah, surprise. It's not like, that's not really funny because then I'll just shit in your booth. Yeah, right. Like, if you lied to me, I'm going to poop in your restaurant and not in the good part. Right. I'm going to poop in the part you're not supposed to poop. <laughs> There's only one place you're supposed to, isn't there? You know, depending on who you are as a person, <laughs> <laughs> depending on the life you've lived up to this moment, there may have been other places to poop. That's true. So I one time remember being on a baseball trip. My buddy's dad had a shit in the woods and he did it and then realized he was too nervous to wipe with leaves. Yeah. Imagine that. Had the went out, took the dump in the woods and then said, can't wipe. Scared of leaves. Yeah. I mean, you imagine getting poison ivy in your butt. Like I would rather that than just sitting in someone else's car, you know, full cheeked. You'd be amazed. I think. It, I think it's. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be amazed. No, you would be amazed because that, be that there's a certain there's a certain type of guy who does that. Like when we, my brother got married last year. I don't know the guys. I, I my can't dad even... went on to that kid was my best friend, and my dad went on to cut him from my baseball team. My dad was a ruthless coach. If the kids weren't good, he cut you. Yeah, you're we like 12 years. He was old. also like, I don't want you hanging out with his dad. He doesn't yeah. wipe with leaves. He was my best friend, and my dad's literally like, he's off the team. He cuts him. Good. And I'll never forget because the <laughs> argument. I'm like, this is my best friend. What the hell's happening? It's though maybe July, middle yeah. of summer. It's after a game. The kid's dad turns to my father and goes, Merry fucking Christmas, and then gets in the car and drives away. And that always stayed with me. One, the anger of it. And two, it was like 100 degrees out. Yeah, but you so can't. It hit so hard. Why can you get mad at that when you. You can't do that. That insult, that like him saying that sliced through the humidity. Do you not see the irony, though, of like you finding that ridiculous, but not ridiculous to go as Santa Claus in June? <laughs> I don't find him yelling Merry fucking Christmas ridiculous. I think it was the best thing like, he could yeah, have yelled. Makes sense. I've never forgotten it. <laughs> the amount of people who have yelled at me in my life is astronomical. Right. The amount that I've remembered is very slim. And Merry right. fucking Christmas is up there. One of the only things I remember of people being mean to me. Yeah. There's like two scenarios of people being mean to me that I remember that. And then a teacher in high school one time was mean to me. Why would they do? Not mean. It was just like. It's one of those things you don't forget. I used to be like the class clown. Right. So uh, one Christmas, you? I was on dress down. Li- yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I was on the dress down list, which means I wasn't allowed to dress down because it was a Catholic school. Right. But it was the last day before Christmas break. So I said, you know what? I'm going in dressed as an elf completely. <laughs> I wore booty shorts, elf shoes. I had on a full costume Hell with like yeah. 100 bells. And I had to get communion. So all I remember is like me walking to get communion. Jingling. Jingling <laughs> up to get communion. Everyone's staring. So I'm like, I got to find a way to monetize this. Right. Because it was a rich school. You know, a lot of rich kids. I was just the baseball player who somehow was hanging around the school. So I'm like, let me say, let me tell kids to donate to the Endangered Elf Foundation. Just make up this bullshit sign. I write a sign, Endangered Elf Foundation, donate your money. I get given like, I get $150. You've always been a go-getter. Yeah. So I get $150. I'm walking. One of my teachers, the med teacher, young, she just gotten into the school, sees me counting the money. She says, Dan, come, come in my room. So I go into her room. She goes, what are you doing? I said, Endangered Health Foundation. Kids are giving me money. She right. goes, that's a fake charity. I said, yeah. She counts the money, cuts herself 40 bucks, and says, all right, enjoy. Gave herself $40 and then said, have a good one. Keep the rest of it. So I she mean, cut herself into my money. And I will never forget that because that was the coolest thing a teacher ever yeah, did. Yeah, seriously. I don't know why I thought it was, it was kind of like mean, like mob boss feeling. But on the flip side, it was so cool. Well, it was she's like, like I'll welcome turn my cheek. You pay for me to. Yeah, take. exactly. She's like, she, everyone wants a taste, dude. She but was also, fired very shortly after. Well, I believe. unrelated, right? Yeah. But the thing no, is, she, she went for a bigger one. She had to rob a bank. Yeah, right. <laughs> she got a no mask taste on. Of it. Yeah. I mean, how she's cool working is that? At, yeah, that is cool. But you have to think she's working at a as a math teacher at a Catholic school. Forty dollars. That's overpaid, like half of her man. half of her annual everyone salary. Knows teachers are overpaid. <laughs> yeah, especially at Catholic school. I went to. Y- did you go to Catholic school? I went to Catholic school. I don't was talk like, bad about it, man. No, like, I honestly, d- I'm so good at phone sex because of confession with priests. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> it made me so good at it through that confessional. You're right. Yeah. yeah, you just learn to get comfortable t- <laughs> dealing with a little bit of silence while you're exactly. vulnerable. You know, it's all about that's, that's where the base, the, the groundwork was put in. Dude, I went to Catholic school and like it's pretty unbelievable because dress down days for us was you pay a dollar, you dress down, and you and the money goes to charity. Oh my god, I forgot we paid to dress down. Yeah, but see, the money would go to charity, and that's why it was hard. I knew a, I knew a guy who would go to homeroom in his uniform because he didn't want to pay the dollar. Yeah. And then after, because, you know, all you needed was the homeroom teacher to collect the dollar. Yep. 
And then this guy would leave and go to his car and put on dress down clothes and go back. And it's like she couldn't give the dollar. That's amazing. The craziest thing I, I remember was there was this kid, Dylan. He was only in my school freshman year. He left after. But my Catholic school had a rule that if you got caught texting, not only did they keep your phone for two weeks, but they had the full right to search it. Right. They could look through your messages. They had it for two weeks. So this kid, Dylan, was the dealer of the freshman oh, year. Yeah. So he gets caught texting in the hallway. The science teacher, who was the real, the strictest teacher, says, give me your phone. And he looks at her and he looks at the phone, fully knowing what's on there. And he goes, not worth it. And he puts the phone on the ground and stomps on it, destroys the phone, picks up the pieces and puts it in her hand and says, take it if you want. What'd you do? And destroyed his own phone <laughs> because of the drug deal. That's on like... It. I don't remember what she did, but I remember like just seeing him step on it and being like, there's no answer now. No one could do anything to him. Right. And he's a and he's a martyr for that because he's also saving all of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Good for him. Yeah. He uh, fun fact. Now, that kid is a glass blower. He designs bowls and bongs now. He's a professional glass. Blower. I love it because people would have looked at him in high school and said, you'll never be anything. And, and he's now like, he's still kind of nothing, yeah. but he's nothing in a field that makes now him makes happy. Not, I gotta be honest, I love glass blowing, dude. Netflix dude. put on a docu like a documentary series, like a competition of glass blowers. <laughs> I binge. I don't binge watch many things. I sat down. The funniest part about it though is like, you know, they gotta melt the glass. They put it in the right. fire. You know what they call the fire thing? They call it a glory Can hole. Oh really? So the entire time, they're like, I'm sticking my glass <laughs> in the glory hole, and I'm like, hey, you couldn't pick a different word. Yeah, I feel like that's the street. That's the slang term for it, isn't it? The glory hole. Isn't it a kiln? I don't know. <laughs> now you're testing me on my glass blowing knowledge. You know, you watched the documentary. I didn't. So you know better than me. The you worst thing about wrong. the show, though, is the amount of mind blown puns. Being like, I'm blown away. And they wink at the camera. It's like, come <laughs> on like, now. You are disqualified. You're seriously calling something a glory what is hole. A, what does a winner look like? Is it who can do it quickest? Is it the quality of no, the glass? No, it's like the quality. It's like who gets to who's, who's who's the I mean, just think about how hard the art form is. Imagine creating a joke. Right. You finally think you have the joke and then it breaks and you can't ever use it again. <laughs> it is a pretty ridiculous thing That's to be good so, at. Like, your job is based around glass not breaking. One of the most breakable things. You know, there, there's contests for everything. There's contests for who can make the best cup of coffee using an AeroPress. Not even just in general the best cup of I coffee. I don't know what an AeroPress is, but I'm picturing uh, Robin, green getup, shooting arrows at coffee. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, that's okay. exactly. Yeah, you're 100 yeah. percent right. <laughs> I don't know why that was my first thought. Was an actual arrow was involved, like jamming down the grind. Right. That's how you you break the. Well, you, yeah, you take an arrow and stab the beans. That's how you grind it up. You don't get a very fine grind yeah, with that. Okay. But, but there's yeah, and you watch it, and that was the, worse than my club versus club thing. What's Being, that? My that thing that I just oh, said. Oh yeah. yeah. That was worse than the clubs. Yeah, how come you come up with incredibly great high thoughts when I'm not around? <laughs> yeah, my because that's the thing about high thoughts, man, is they're sporadic. Yeah. Some of them, gold. Other ones, you're just like, what do I even mean? Yeah. I never had the... See, I, I'm. it's funny that Dan and I... It's not funny we get along so well, but we are very different, like... I don't I don't smoke weed at all. And I could I know you don't because, because you I think, lowered your voice when you said it. Yeah. You were it was like, like a cop behind like, me. Listen, like it's, it's funny me and Dan are friends, but I don't smoke weed at all. <laughs> not, <laughs> like, not for me. Yeah, and there was a child watching you say that. Yeah. So it made well, sense. Go, to yeah. To live above the influence. Like at all you don't. That's it's interesting because that means eventually we'll have to do a completely high episode. Of both of us? Yep. In all the right. what a what a place to be stoned is a deli. But that's the thing is it's not gonna it's gonna be fun for you it's not gonna be fun for me because I've only I mean like people can tell I don't because I'll be like I, I've only smoked pot a handful of times with like I know because you called it pot and it's <laughs> like what the fuck do you want me to say you know what I mean I've done it like three people times. People get mad at me for calling myself a stoner They're like that's a term that's no longer around like stoners could be some of the most critical people which makes no sense because we're peaceful or at least most of us. I are. don't get I don't get why it would matter to anyone. But yeah I think stone thoughts are my favorite thing because you just go from like a regular regular day and then you're like oh now i'm thinking about the most abstract thing right you know what my stone thoughts were ah! holy, yeah holy shit there's people around let i gotta get out of here fair man it's uh there's a f you actually called me the other day and it made me realize like you called me and you were like what's up dude and i was like nothing stoned you're like you know you don't need to say that you're anymore. right it's implied we all know that and i was like oh what a good point <laughs> yeah i'm just wasting time that's baseline yeah. you know what i mean that's if you were like hey i'm sober i'd be like is everything okay i always i wanted to get a t-shirt made that just said sorry i'm stoned just to give everyone an answer right because sometimes i do say and do weird stuff because i think it's better no one knows it's more beautiful thing, dude is stoned ubering 
because everyone hates talking to Uber drivers. I don't. I love stoned Ubering. I've been, this is an old joke of mine, but it's a true story. It would happen in LA. I've been so high and chatty in the back of an Uber that the driver put his headphones in. <laughs> I was going to say they're going to have to put, you're going to be the reason they put the option in like quiet ride for yeah, the driver. Exactly. For the driver. No, like I love deep Uber rides. Like what I do is I get really high and I'll just try to talk to these drivers about life, especially in LA and New York because they have some of the most interesting stories. Yeah. The worst thing I ever heard, it was maybe it was like 1 a.m. in LA, West Hollywood. I was going home and this guy, I'm having a deep conversation with him. I'm like, he says, I've lived in three different countries. I've been in LA for eight years. He was 52. And I was like, what's the craziest thing you've learned in life? What's right. the thing that shocked you the most? And he goes, I never understood. He goes, I never grasped how through the years I would learn to completely stop caring about other people. And I was like, ah, that's not what you want to hear from the guy yeah. chauffeuring you right. around the city. As he's looking back, driving, yeah. you're not even, not even paying I attention. I slowly realize he's actually just ripping a cigarette and driving <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> no, man. Us Uber drives are some of the greatest conversations you could have because they only exist in that moment. Yeah. That's what it I It really like. is all within a vacuum. Yeah, which is why comedy is great because it exists in that moment. I mean, and it's also like it's, it's a show. weird thing where it's like you, I bet if they did a study on it, they'd find that you're probably... It puts you into a different mindset. Like, I remember this guy picked me up when I was in Florida, and he was like, I'm a spiritual counselor or something for a religion that I wasn't even, like, raised in. Yeah. And he gave me his card, and in the car, I was like, yeah, I'll give him a call. Mm -hmm. And then I got out, and I was like, no, I won't. But it was <laughs> like I had to exit to get that change. <laughs> that just reminds me. <laughs> this guy, I'm in the car. Again, it's a Los Angeles Uber driver. They're a breed of their own because almost all of them are in show business and or are theatrical. <laughs> right. So this guy, I get in the car and he's flustered. I'm like, what's up, though? He's like out of breath. He's like, I just had the craziest experience with one of the most beautiful women I've ever driven. I'm pretty sure she's into me. But she also said, when you get off, meet me at the church you dropped me off at. That's where I'll be at. That's where I work. I'll meet me there. So he goes, she also could just be like recruiting me into a religion. Right. So it's like, I don't know what I should do. I'm like, you should obviously not go. Right. You like, don't want to become a Scientologist and he goes, by I proxy. Think you're wrong. So he says, give me your number. So I'm like, no. So he's like, all right, give me yours. I'm like, no, nah, dude, no one's exchanged numbers. And then somehow, I don't remember how he got his number at him. He got my number at him. Well, so he just he, asked a second time. He asked, yeah, that's all it took. I fold immediately. So I give him my number. Later that night, he texts me. He goes, wasn't religious, was a freak, exclamation point. Wow, why'd they meet at the church? <laughs> did you, did you, didn't, I that didn't was enough for you. I didn't follow up. That was, an, like, that was the end of the drive. I thought it would have been even better if like, he texts you the next day. Help. He, yeah. Or, or like, <laughs> hey, man, come meet me at the church. And then like he's converting you now. That was actually the joke I made to him. He was like, I'm going to text you later. I was like, the only way I want to hear from you is if it says help. Because <laughs> that's where I see this going. Was a freak. But yeah, he was. Uh, I don't know. I love I hate these people who get into Ubers and like, don't talk to me. I get it if you're in that mood. But it's like there are some people who every time they're in get like I've been in with friends who get mad when the driver talks. I'm like, no, I want to talk to them. It's fun. Yeah, it's mean, so it's like, weird if we just sit here and don't acknowledge each other. Yeah. I Almost think, like the customers in the deli looking at us right now. Yeah, exactly. I feel like we're on display in a zoo. I hope well, we kind of are, aren't we? We're in our element of food. <laughs> I think um I think it's a funny thing with um Uber drivers because like I think cab drivers perceive themselves as like I'm working and they don't necessarily try to talk to you, they'll just talk on the phone. Uber drivers are kind of like, you know, this isn't my main thing, and they see you as more like they're not it sounds shitty to say, but I think cab drivers perceive it as like, I'm working for you, then you leave and that's it. Uber drivers are like, we're equals. Yeah. I don't need to pick you up. They're not working for you. And then they feel like they you owe them the conversation. It all depends on the mood I'm in. I'm never going to be mean. I'm never going to say, hey, dude, can you stop talking just to talk me? talk anyone's ear off at any moment. Yeah. I have no qualms about just divulging my darkest and deepest secrets to strangers yeah i could meet That's someone and true. within two minutes i'll be talking to them about anything they want to know you've told me within i think i had a really hard time reading you when i met you because i was like i don't know if this guy likes me but he's also confiding very dark <laughs> secrets <laughs> into me <laughs> yeah man i don't there's this i get people's anxieties i mean i have social anxiety and such but on the flip side i have no issue telling everyone everything right because i give everyone a chance and well, i think I the best chance is to just start with it all out there when you're so candid too i i kind of realized i was like yeah what's he what's he some got people to be afraid hate it, of though, yeah some people what hate is, candidness no i know it, there's yeah because it's, it's honesty because there's this weird thing where there's honest people then there's people who love saying 
call me a dick, but I'm just honest. Like, no, you can still be a dick. Right. There's a way to be honest and not be a dick. Right. But yeah, you, I, but I actually really appreciated that when you were, you would just say these things. Cause I was like, Oh, I know what this guy's all about from the start. I'm not judging him. And if you just put it out there, you kind of got nothing to hide. It's been more interesting now being that honest of a person as someone who now lives a gluten free life. <laughs> Because I have to be that angry with everyone now. <laughs> like, I've lost, I would say, three friends to White Claw. Why? I should I should specify. I've lost three friends to me defending White Claw. <laughs> why? Why? Oh, it's gluten-free? Because I so quickly, like, there is a certain type of man who will say the same thing. Like, oh, drinking White Claw. And then the second I hear that, I go on a rant about toxic masculinity, about how they're shitty men. And I'm like, you toxic pieces. This is a good beverage. It's it's all the sexists can enjoy it. Everyone likes White Claw. Like, I've really angered people. With, I love how it turns you political so quickly, my arguments of White Claw and why they're shitty men. That I'm like, just because your father raised you wrong to not like yeah. White Claw, because he wasn't around enough that you can't enjoy a hard seltzer, and I lose my mind, dude. I go to bat for White Claw. You were... You're so funny because you were you're like since I've met you you've kind of 180 and like your your personality I mean you haven't lost who you are obviously but you become like a very mellow person but you can still just at a moment's notice snap Yeah I just literally get mellow about things like that now like I wear a peace necklace I'm a hippie blah 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 the second you call me less than a man for drinking White Claw, that's just a stupid assumption. And, and you that's also lose toxic it. masculinity. Let's comes back. It is toxic. I'm just start arguing about yeah. it again. I'm like, I don't, I don't. I will <laughs> not argue like this for the ruby grapefruit flavor. Ruby grapefruit. It was a tongue twist of the first. I'm looking at you, camera. I will not argue this way for ruby White Claw. Mango, not, I'll do anything. I never for. had any of them. Ugh. I mean, I also Shame. haven't. Dr- I haven't. I I haven't drank since. Like White Claw didn't even come out when I was really? still drinking. Yeah, uh, you're sober too. I don't do anything. That's why when you were like, "Oh, we'll do a high episode," I'm like, "Well, maybe we won't." <laughs> Are attractive people just high on life all the time? You guys don't need vices. No, I just got sick of waking you just up look every day. You in the day. mirror and you're like, "Oh shit, I just smoked weed. Look at me. <laughs> I just <laughs> still hot. Don't need this." I just look. I just got so sick of waking up every day. Like I feel like absolute hell. I just would get so. Sad. That's the great thing about White Claw, dude. I know everyone has their own hangover thing, but. On the tour that I was on for a month and a week, I drank nothing but White Claw every day, and I never had a hangover. It was it. I think it's hangover proof. Well, it's kind of like it's seltzer water, right? Yeah, but like the hangover is kind of like you, like you get hangovers for two days now, right? Now the older you get, you get them for like two. Oh days. yeah, I would get them for like a week. And I remember one night we drank so much White Claw, like maybe like a a case each. Yeah. It was. We wake up the next morning. And I have the bed, to, the bedroom to myself, and I open the blinds, expecting the sun to just be like, remind you know, like when the sun reminds you of your sins from the right, night right, before. Right. And I opened it, nothing. I was so shocked that I closed the blinds again and opened it a second time to be like, are you sure? Yeah, right. Do you not want to do god, this to me? Do you want to punish me? <laughs> punish me. <laughs> oh my god, I know. I, uh, but you know what? The reason I, I can't really definitively say I don't like smoking weed is because every time I've smoked weed, I was also drunk. Fair. So I was always bothed, and you were like, both. yeah, <laughs> and like I drunk and high at the same time. Yeah, doing on, the on an on an airplane. I remember that not. came out in high school, and I remember we used to sing those lines while smoking weed on swings, thinking <laughs> it was somewhat. So I'm like, yeah, drunk and high. Look, we're hitting a joint yeah, on a swing on an airplane. Yeah. Um, so you'd have you've never isolated it. I mean, I uh, no, no, but like I just remember, I actually I remember one time I was high and drunk and i was in a deli in college very similar to this yeah, deli more of a bodega similar. but i this is gonna this is gonna make me sound like an idiot but i was so out of it and you know i was so like content and i just the universe seemed to be like on my side yeah that the guy handed me food and i was just like this is free right now <laughs> and i don't know if my buddy paid for me i don't know if you know um I don't I don't you know were, if I I don't know if I paid but I just kind of vaguely remember being like maybe the employee was so convinced at your knowledge of it being free that he was like it must yeah. be free or he just looked at me and was like this kid needs this more than I need yeah. the money you know what I mean he is out of it he, he can't keep his eyes open a sandwich yeah. and he was like oh I just I, picture you like the way you described that like the voice of the heavens behind it, like oh yeah like while the sandwich is handed it, to you. he just held it and it glided over to me you know yeah it's 
I have a very interesting relationship with food now as a stoner because I am gluten free and I do have celiac, so I don't eat bad things anymore. So like my munchies are so obscure. Yeah. Like at this point, my munchies exist just to make gluten free food taste better. Yeah. It's amazing. That's it. That's a very wow. That's powerful. Like I learned last night because Reese's gluten free. Right. Certain Oreos ice creams, are, aren't they? Or no, Oreos, Oreos are dairy are, free. Yeah. Which kind of makes you wonder what is that in the middle? Fair. Yeah. What is that? Ugh. You kind of wish it wasn't dairy free. It's flavored with meat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's actually a Prego spread. It's Alfredo sauce. Um, you should go. You should. That's a great point, though. You should like start preaching that. Is people are like I don't want to do the gluten free diet. And it's like, well, just get high. Yeah. It doesn't. Like, suck. Last night I mixed the Reese's. I become all celiac disease has made me as a stone as a Cold Stone Creamery employee because now I just An mash gluten free items into ice cream. Right. And Reese's are. So I'm mashing these Reese's and I learned something really nice. When you get just high enough, sure. And you eat a Reese's that's submerged in ice cream. Yeah. Kind of tastes like a Girl Scout cookie thin mint. Wow. It was it was mint ice cream. I should preface with I'm that. glad you said that. Yeah, I was it would be very it. weird if that wasn't like I think you're in the middle of I think you're still in the stroke that you were having. It was so good that it might have caused the stroke <laughs> where like I tasted it and for a second there was no real thoughts because it was just pleasure because <laughs> I didn't taste something that good in a while. Just dopamine dripping like, down ah, your skull. This isn't made from cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. When's the last time you had gluten and was it by accident? Uh, I accidentally got drunk and had fries from McDonald's on the tour. How'd that go? Uh, five hours of pooping in a St. Louis Fairfield Inn and Suites. I like when you add more detail, it just makes it sound worse. St. Louis <laughs> upset me because they actually had the best gluten-free bread. The sign said best gluten-free bread you'll ever taste. Right. And I had it. Challenge, It yeah. was amazing. Best gluten-free bread I ever had. But the upsetting thing is like, okay, cool, you did it. Go tell other people now. Go share the recipe. Why do you guys have the recipe for well, the best like, free bread? And why does no one else have it? Why are you not franchising into New York City? Why you, are you know not what I think it is though. Franchising into my stomach. But you know what the funny thing is? It might only be. I th I'm a big believer that the water makes things good. It's like why New York bagels and New York pizza is better, and then these restaurants try to open a chain in California and it sucks. It's just different tap water. I went to high school with a kid whose dad invented that machine. That, water? That mo no, it it changes oh. it changes the molecular level of water to taste like New York City water. Oh, really? It's like an ionizer I mean, or whatever? It's like some crazy expensive machine that yeah. has been on Shark Tank and such or one of those bajillion air shows. What do they do? They just run it through like a little... They got like a, like a filter that's like New York sewage. Yeah. And it just goes through that and it tastes yeah. better. It's actually, it's a big tube and then there's just a guy named Sal in the middle of it. <laughs> and they just shower him and yeah. then the water comes off Sal tasting like... He he looks at the water. water. Just, yeah, he looks at the water and goes, "Oh, and yeah, then it's, it's good to go." Yeah, it's just flavored with sal. Yeah, in a tube. Yeah. Oh God, that's horrible. <laughs> I really thought there was a better bit of just an Italian guy <laughs> dumping water over him, and that's how you make New York City water. But it was more frightening than anything because no, the sal great. has a lot of hair. You got on it. Him. You got to buy a sal. You, every every ionizer comes yeah, with a everyone sal. Everyone knows the best New York City water has chest hair in it. <laughs> it's such a good point. <laughs> You were so right, but he and yeah, I went to ice like I don't know why. I feel like you went what to high, yeah, you went had ice a with a lot of interesting people. Yeah, you did a lot of kids whose dads were, uh, you know, affiliated. Affiliated, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're both from New Jersey. It was Jersey. never I scratch my back, you scratch yours. It was more like I turn my eye now, I'll turn mine later for you. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Mutually beneficial. I mean, we're both from New Jersey, so like, it was always funny when when like I was a big Sopranos fan. And, and people who weren't from New Jersey would be like, that, oh, that that's unrealistic. And I'm like, I kind of knew people who were a little bit like that. Yeah, I mean, there was there was always someone who, like, you'd hear their stories about, like, oh, you hear about so-and-so's dad? Yeah, he, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I'm not going to learn more about him. Right. He's like, oh, he's on the front of the Star Ledger. Like, okay. Yeah. I. <laughs> you got to make a living, all right? Yeah, you know, I'd we lost a few to racketeering. <laughs> Did you? That's I don't a even great... know what that means, but it's such a cool thing. I think racketeering is that that age old practice, which I don't even know how you would do it I in the modern day. I picture it of like a store, and then old men on crates in the back gambling. That's yeah. a racket to me. Yeah. Are you guys gambling? Yeah. Oh, you're racketeering. No, what it is is you know that like whole thing of you go in. It's like if someone came into your dad's deli and was like, "Oh, you need protection." And he's like, from what? And they're like, oh, from whatever. We'll protect you. And it's like he ends up just paying them like 10 yeah. grand a month so they don't come in and throw a Molotov cocktail. Would be, I would love to have to see my dad pay money to the mob. <laughs> Why? Why would you <laughs> no, ever I would, want to? I would, no, I would love to see them try that because my dad's a tough individual. Yeah, right. I mean, he's literally beat people up in this store. Really? Yeah. Remember the dude? Uh, 
uh, early morning, a guy walked in. This was like three months ago. Tall dude in a leather jacket, and he was not buying anything. And at that, it was six in the morning, so no one else is in the store. Mm -hmm. My dad obviously right away picks up on him. Only my dad and my uncle are near. My uncle comes in before the pizzeria to help prep the store if there's deliveries and such. So they're in here. The guy's wandering around the aisles. Then he breaks something. So they walk over there because they notice he has something in his hand and he's knocking stuff over. And they say, hey, we're going to need to ask you to leave. And he takes whatever's in his hand and he swings it. And that's when my dad realizes it's a shirt with a lock in it. Oh, Jesus. So he swings it. My dad ducks and it shatters the door because the whole door is glass. What? It breaks the door. So then my dad spears him, takes him down, and puts him in a guillotine and just choke holds him until the cops come. That's, in that's incredible. And then, the, and then the cops go, do you want to press charges? And my dad goes, I held this guy on the ground in front of people on their morning commute. He's had enough punishment. <laughs> that's great. And he just let him go. God, what a unit. You're and he wouldn't let me. Like, I wanted the footage from the store. He didn't want it out there. He was mad that I shared the story. That's no, nah, that's incredible. I don't, no one would look at that and say your dad was in the wrong. No, it's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, I I, I hate that my dad's strong. <laughs> well, he's got dad strength, so no matter what, you could never be. Yeah, him. like I don't think I legally think parents should be required to be fat and out of shape because children naturally rebel. Yeah, and if you rebel against your fat parents, you'll get abs. <laughs> and if you, rebe I rebelled against my in shape parents and became morbidly obese. <laughs> I was like, you'll never stop me, mom. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Danny, no. <laughs> That's how I rebelled was just Hagen Dazs. Good for you though, man. Yeah. You made your own cold stone creamery. Hagen Dazs and I now eat soy chew candies. I had those today. Ugh. High seas, what are they? High chews? Oh, those are great actually. They're amazing. I love those. The wow. sour ones? Oh. I started eating them in Los Angeles as meals because that's what one does in LA. Right. You substitute meals for what isn't meals. And it's the cheap alternative. Yeah. Um, I would eat those and go hiking. L.A. hiking, though. That's where I started hiking was L.A. Because I was like, oh, you just walk up a dirt hill, take a picture, and say you hiked. Yeah, exactly. And my cousin seven feet in Jersey, above. yeah, it was like, come hiking. And within two minutes, I'm climbing rock. And I'm Jesus like, this Christ. Is, my life's in danger. I know. Apparently out there, you just got to get like three feet above sea level, and it's considered a hike. Yeah. <laughs> so just a little bit of athletic. You're activity. going out there again soon, aren't you? Yeah, February maybe. Yeah. I like it in L.A. because of the dispensaries. You know, weed isn't legal here yet. I've never once had to call a dispensary and be like, are you the one next to the tree or right. the garbage can? Yeah, exactly. The dispense always is the building. Yeah, my dispensary took an hour to show up. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's a funny thought of a building just walking <laughs> in. Hey. I love the idea of anytime cartoons used to make buildings walk and gave them like arms and feet, I'd yeah. lose my mind. It's hilarious. I'm a simple man. You, you are. You give me that and you give me a, an animal talking in a commercial. This and is I great. will lose my what mind. What do I need? Yeah. And we all know it. And you got. And we it's all funny. know the third one, Jack. What's mini that? golf. Yeah, always three thoughts away from mini golf. That's true. Dan is always, always like right on the cusp of of talking about mini golf. We went mini golfing on the tour. Me and my tour mates, Maggie and Michael, three separate times. Yeah. One of the times on the twelfth hole, an actual monsoon started in Florida, torrentially pouring rain, and we finished the game. Like, We're not done. We like, Can we leave? We did six more holes of mini golf. In a monsoon. Do you win every time? No. I you're only, not even good at it. <laughs> you know what the thing? It depends on how high I am. Because mini golf is the type of situation where if you're too stone, you end up just staring at that windmill. Yeah, right. You know, they it's children and stoners see the eye through the world see the world through very similar it's eyes. It's a very I poetic think. thing you just said. I yeah. love that. They're like, I, sir, are you gonna finish playing? You're like, I, I got what I came for. <laughs> yeah, like this wasn't about the actual game. This yeah. was about the nostalgicness. The of scenery. It. But that's, that's like, why I love this deli. This is nostalgic to me. Stoners, I think, as a whole are very nostalgic people because weed is something you could trace as a constant throughout your entire life. Right. There's not many constants in life, especially in life and show business, there's not many constants. But I could trace back, you know, the past 11 years of my life since being 13, 14 years old as a stoner. That's been a constant. Right. Every time. It's always been there. Yeah. And that's why I think stoners are nostalgic. We love thinking about old times. Or maybe yeah. I just love mini golf. I do try hard. You do Don't like mini golf. That's your go-to date. It's my go-to date, which I shouldn't put this on a podcast because in the past year since I've started dating again, I have taken three separate women mini golfing. <laughs> That was like in the past month. That's your go-to. All right, way to just throw <laughs> just them kidding. even more I'm under kidding. the bus. No, Dan uh, is a total gentleman. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's not for any type of move. I just it's it's, it's fun for me, and it's fun. <laughs> it's for me, but it's funny how it's become like if you if Dan if Dan says to me he doesn't tell me he goes on a date he'll be like oh I played mini golf last night I'm like oh who who was she you know? <laughs> what was her name yeah I'm like, he's like yeah. 
It was actually the Roaring Rapids course in Howell, New Jersey. <laughs> Do you have a favorite course? I wonder when Waterfall. Uh, favorite course. I haven't seen enough yet. Yeah, you got to get out there more. I need to get out there more. There's a mini golf TV show, which makes me unhappy that I wasn't considered for it. I need to talk That's to like my manager. That's like the Steph Curry one, isn't it? Steph Curry did work his way in Rob Riggle, who just yells, mini golf. And <laughs> What a career. Yeah. When, that's the dream. Yeah. I love Rob Riggle. He's fantastic. I couldn't not. I mean, he has the line, one of the most unforgettable lines in a movie. What, Step, Step Brothers? Brothers. Yeah. He turns, International Waters, right? Yeah, he goes, I'm going to eat your dick like Kobayashi. <laughs> and that one of the most <laughs> notorious lines, I've never forgotten that line. Yeah. That's iconic. Eat, and then he goes, <laughs> he He's like, great in everything he's in, man. Yeah, and he was, wasn't my he? My goal is that. I don't want to be an actor. I want to be a one-sided actor. I want to be the guy who's in the same, who does the same thing. And I, I want to be Danny McBride is what I'm saying. Yeah. And he gets the, and he gets like, you know, he's the first choice. They're like, we need, we, he's a very specific part. They either write a part with him in mind, Rob Riggle, or it's like they write a part and it's like, no brainer. He's the one we got to get. You what know what I mean? life that someone wrote a line, I'm going to eat your dick like Kobayashi and they go, Rob Riggle. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Isn't that the dream though? That like, could you imagine if someone wrote a line like that and they're like, we need to get Dan Lamort on this. Yeah, that's why I like being a stoner, because I'm hoping the stone lines will get me that. Yeah, right. You just come in for the one line, get a day's pay, and leave. I like being... I would love to be a voice in the stoner world. It's a fun thought. They're a fun people, man. Stoners are... I mean, I this was an idea of mine that I've had recently, but the thought that someone discovered marijuana right. and told others about it goes right. to show you how peaceful we are. It's so true. Someone commented underneath that, though. They're like, can't that be said about meth, too? Yeah. And I'm like, no. No. Oh. No one's ever intentionally said it. Like, no one is unintentionally set out to make meth. Right. When you discovered weed, I'm sure they unintentionally did it. No, I think it's a beautiful thing. you th mix stuff together. I think that's a beautiful thing, though, to, to create it to and create be like, meth? hey, let's scratch our skin off together, you know? <laughs> like, this is... Do you I like also you, feel bugs under your yeah, skin? We I, did it right. I like you enough that we should ruin our lives together. Fair. Stoners, we're just peaceful. We just sit there and forget we're with each other, and yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Or if you're me, you leave the room and go panic in another room. I mean, that's the great thing about being high, though, is when you do leave the room, no one goes, oh, no, he's leaving the room. If you're sober and leave the room, people are like, that guy's insane. Yeah. I have to pee so badly. Weed is an excuse. You need to pee right now. Yeah. Should we pause this? I think we should pause it. Okay. And now we're back, Jack. Okay. We're back from your bladder issue. You had to go to the bathroom as a young person it's, with uh, a bad bladder. It's okay, it's, though. I'm on the road. My guy who I go on the road with is 34 years old, so we stop quite often for his bladder. Dude, it's bad though. If I'm, this is what I'm like at 24, like it's not gonna get better. No, I have it to is, pee all the time. Yeah, I wouldn't have had you pegged as someone with a bad bladder. I mean, on the outside, you look like your insides would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I was I was like saying it's it's I got a small bladder to begin with, and then I wear tight pants, do like the skinny jean thing, and it's just comp everything's compressed. It's pushing down on my tiny little bladder. I had, I have no idea like what goes on in there about the bladder, but I do know that sitting on a milk crate with, I also have tight jeans on, is pushing everything in. Yeah. Like, I feel like my stomach right now is being flavored by meat. <laughs> that was a good callback about yeah, my well dick done. being so far inside me right now. <laughs> flavored by yeah, meat. Yeah, I thought that was a good little riff. <laughs> well done. I think, just so the cameras have it, I mean, we've been bringing mm. up Prego flavored with meat. <laughs> flavored with meat. <laughs> flavored with meat. I, I would have preferred that it wasn't flavored with meat. It's like the old Oreo thing. If it's not meat, what is it? You know, well, it was just flavored with it. What they did is they took a piece of chicken, yeah, and they just kept dunking it in the sauce. Yeah. There you go. It's flavored and then they took with it meat. Out. It was flavored with it. Um, so tell me. Yeah, sure. Enough deli talk. Okay. Give me golf course stories. Yeah. So, so tell me about the rich side of life. It's a funny thing, caddying, because I. I remember people would be like, you know, what was your first job? I'd say, oh, I was a caddy. And they were like, oh, that's a, that's a rich kid's job. And it's like, no, the rich people are the ones playing the golf. Yeah. <laughs> the caddies, you go into the caddy yard, it's like, there's, there's, it's a dark, it can, it's great. It's Do you fun. really think rich parents are going to send their kids to be a caddy? They know what rich people are like playing golf. That's yeah. not a rich kid job. It's, it's kind of like you get both. You get, you get kids who are like in college because it's the most money you can make as like a 14 year old kid. You make a ton of money, doesn't get taxed. Uh, and Probably then, made more than comedy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then the other side is you get guys who are doing this for their life, and you get some guys who are kind of like trying to piece life back together. So you get a mix of people. Um, Career long caddies. Yeah, 
and you like you can make a living it's not ideal but then you also get guys who are kind of like you know you get paid in cash at the end of the day and you get guys who kind of can't get their life together and you get some guys who are into drugs Ooh, yeah nice but uh but it's a it's it a seems weird like a job you can do hi oh yeah i mean dude like it's sad to say but i've been out there with guys who are like junked out of their mind like falling asleep hell yeah yeah doing yeah exactly it really was Woo! a new jersey golf course yeah, exactly <laughs> That's actually just par for the course at a New Jersey golf course. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Hole nine, there's just a bucket of blues. Yeah, exactly. Pop them. pop them for the back nine. Yeah. Well, I didn't even mean to do the par for the course pun. <laughs> Did you not? I oh. swear to God, I didn't mean to. It was a beautiful, good for you. always up here, Good for man. you. But it's funny because you get these, it's not funny, but it's like such a weird thing where you get like these guys who are really successful going out to play golf and then guys like no more than 40 yards away. Yeah. You guys doing heroin in a bathroom. It's so grim. I just had a funny thought. What's that? Not about the heroin and those guys. Hope oh, RIP. <laughs> hope they get better. Uh, you, you should caddy one of my mini golf dates. <laughs> She's like, well, who is this guy? I'm like, ma'am, I'm a professional. <laughs> showing up to a mini golf date with the caddy. I'm like, I got a bag on my shoulder. I'm like, I think you're going to want to putt this one. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I have no other option. It somehow takes a seemingly already odd date and makes it even I'll more do it. odd. We should film it without her knowing. Yeah, that's what works now. Yeah. <laughs> that won't hurt us in any way. That sounds so awful, that soundbite film her without her knowing. Ugh. Yeah, we'll film her without her knowing. Just cut that and Jack's yeah, done. This is the end of me. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you one story about when I was caddy, and that was like, it, it was one of the most ridiculous things aside, you know, from the drug use and everything. I was I was caddying with this guy who I loved. His name was Steve. Still is Steve. And we were walking down the fairway, and our guys were on the <laughs> Still seat. Is <laughs> Still is Steve. Still is Steve. Our guys were on the tee box, and they shouldn't have been hitting because the group in front of us was still within range. Yeah. You know, you, you wait for them to get out of the way, so then you can hit. So we're not really paying attention because there's no reason our guys should be hitting. And uh, Steve and I are walking side by side, and we got our bags on our shoulders. And I just hear the sound of like one of our guys hitting, and I'm like, "Why are they hitting?" And I like turn around, and as I turn around, the ball comes in at like full speed. It's on its descent, and just hit steve on the back of the neck oh yeah and i watched it it was like a centimeter away from his spine it could have been fatal yeah you know and <laughs> you never know how someone's gonna react like you see movies of people getting shot or people getting hit with something you're like i wonder what it would be like in real life yeah and it was less dramatic but also like in its own way more weird because he gets hit and he just goes i'm hit I I've love been an, hit. I love and i've been hit yeah Yell i've been hit every time <laughs> yeah yes yeah and i was just like like, I didn't know if this guy was going to be a paraplegic after this. Like, it was horrible. Uh, and um, awful injury to explain to your kids why yeah, you can't walk anymore. Right. And then the ball, you know, hits his neck and fall, <laughs> falls in place. And he's got a gigantic welt. And by the time our guys get out to us, the guy he's caddying for is just like, what happened? And we're like, you hit Steve in the... <laughs> you, you almost killed Steve. You was know? Steve, a, Steve was a caddy? No, yeah, and Steve was, was like he 60. one of the drug users? No, oh, Steve he was, was sober, really good well, guy. Well, he was probably on pills, but different types. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah blue exactly. Chew. Well, Viagra. Viagra, right. Yeah. Vitamin blue chew. C. We gotta get a blue chew sponsorship. That'd be great. Every podcast has a blue chew. That'd be great. Just Wouldn't chewable it? Viagra. That's the dream. You know what's the first chewable Viagra? Viagra. You just couldn't. Yeah, you, you just, just shoot it. And any dealt any with pills it. chewable yeah. if you got enough heart. Boom, we're doing. Any, why does any, any jokes, Why does so it, it? Why does um? Why is chewing it make it better? Makes, makes your it bloodstream quicker. quicker. You don't know yeah. that. That's like you know like. I remember my earliest experience with like the drug rush was gogurt, because you used to need a bite off the pack, so you'd cut your gums and then just get gogurt in your gums. You'd be like, <laughs> it's in my blood. That was my <laughs> earliest knowledge of getting. You know, drugs into your gums. Intravenous <laughs> gogurt. Yeah, yeah, I was just cutting my lips on gogurt and you injecting taste good it life. into my gums. But I mix it. I miss a drinkable yogurt. Go get a gogurt, man. You're worth it. They're not as good as in, in adulthood. It's a heavy drink. It's heavier than a milkshake. I'd say. It's disgusting. It's awful. It was like when you remember when Skippy tried doing that with the peanut butter in a tube. <laughs> Peanut butter in a tube, like yeah. toothpaste. Yeah, it was like you squirt. It was disgusting. Wow. And my mother, I remember she was like, "My that it's there's very few things that upset my mother." But I remember her watching that and <laughs> that being like, her? "Yeah." She was like, "That's horrible." She's like, Did "We're she all hum also hate the mix of the peanut butter and jelly in the same jar." I don't think that was ever allowed in our house, yeah. just based on principle. Based on principle, that is an awful idea to yeah. mix those two. It's gross. Yeah. Because think about it, when it's on the sandwich, you won't you have a very narrow sweet spot before the sandwich goes soggy. You've just expedited that process infinitely. I'm also personally more jelly than peanut butter. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What I do now is gluten free waffles. Yeah. And then I put peanut butter and jelly on it. Yeah. But then I said, No, no, no. I burn gluten free waffles, I cut them up, 
Cold Stone him in ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's you're 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 on your A game recently. Yeah, just you know what I I mix it up like the back of Steve's neck. <laughs> well, so nice so the worst pulverized. the worst part about that was when when the guys get out there, uh, he goes, he goes, oh, you know, what happened? He goes, you hit me with your golf ball, and he goes, we well, should have been paying attention. I lost distance, and it's like. That's your first thought. I lost distance. He was like, I, the ball would have been thirty yards ahead, and it's like, I, and like, they, I lost vertebrae. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I don't have C nine anymore. <laughs> he looked at him. Steve just looked at him and went, "Sir, I was hit." And the guy kind of realized, <laughs> like, you know. I love the I'm hit thing. I remember as a like a family wedding. I don't remember how long ago it was, but there was a bee flying around the photos. Yeah, and we all like ran, and my little cousin, not little, he's a year older than me, with little at the time, was super dramatic, and he got stung. And I remember him screaming, I've been hit and falling to the <laughs> ground crying. But not like a joking around. Like he was actually like, it looked like he had been shot. Right, like he was storming the beaches yeah. of Normandy and someone picked him off. I remember that same cousin. We used to watch the TV show Medium with yeah. Patricia Arquette. Sure. And he used to lose his mind. Too scared of it. Really? Couldn't deal with it. He deserved to get stung. Not the show, just Patricia Arquette. <laughs> yeah, he deserved to get stung. I don't know what to tell you. She's come into this deli, Patricia Arquette. Is that right? Yeah. And what, your cousin had to leave? <laughs> my cousin had to leave. <laughs> I got to get out of here. Yeah, my dad didn't even take a picture with her. Not a fan. I, I couldn't pick her out of a lineup. I have no I've idea never who she is. I, I told you the one time, and I was going from one spot in the city, bombed, awful. It was at the V spot before it became nice, like the club it is now. Yeah. So it's there's a great a, spot now. Yeah, it's a great spot now. But that was when there was no stage. We were in the back of the room, and there was drums behind me. And a kid walked up in the middle of my set, went on the drums, and started doing that da da ting <laughs> oh, like during my sets. And I almost like strangle him with a drumstick. I freak out. I'm st I storm out of that venue. I'm walking back to Greenwich Village for another spot. And I bump into someone and I look up and I'm like, oh, shit. Sorry, Paris Hilton. Oh, really? And she's like, no worries. Like her security's there. They're like a little flustered that somehow they let me walk up. Like, right. And I was like, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Good at our and she's job. like, you want a picture? I was like, no, I'm on my way to a spot. <laughs> and I just kept walking. Like my only memory of her is telling her I don't want to take a picture with her. That's very. But she it, was so sweet. Yeah. She I think she gets a bad rep. I think the whole like her whole persona was an act and she's actually not a bad person. Wouldn't that yeah. have been great, though, if when you're like, oh, hi, Paris Hilton. She's like, oh, it's OK, Dan Lamore. <laughs> <laughs> she's a DJ now. I think her and Macaulay Culkin. She's loaded, man. Two DJs. She's dude. got Culkin. So... Culkin DJ. Wow, good for you. You know them, that man. Macaulay DJs? I didn't know that. He doesn't act. His brother does, though. Secession. It's really good. Now right? I'm just naming things. I have started that show. Two Aunt episodes Jemima. in. Big fan. Not a big binge watcher of anything outside of that glass blowing show. Did I? Did I tell you uh, I had someone walk across the stage to get to the bathroom? Real recently. Yeah, like a couple months ago, but it was like jarring it was like the that you know the you know the bear? old uh no lantern do you know that story you remember that old story of dave attell where like the homeless guy came in and like walked in front of him and, and then like went to the bathroom and then left <laughs> and like the whole crowd was just and he just goes yeah did you guys see him too yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> i literally had that and that's what it felt like i was like you can't even be mad because you're like did this guy really just have the balls to do that and he comes back, and I'm like, dude, what was that about? And he was like, I had to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, you could have walked around the other way. He was, like, mad at me. He was oh, like, leave he like, me alone. Did he walk in front of you or behind you? He walked in front of me, stepped on the stage, which also, like, he could have walked in front of me and not even touched the stage. Yeah. He was making a point to stand, get on the stage and just walk out. And then he told me, like, he dismissed me. I was like, dude, why would you do that? I was trying to, like, riff with him a bit. And he was just like, keep doing your thing. You know, in all legal purposes, when their foot touches the stage, you are allowed to hit them. I don't know if that'll hold up. I in don't court, think it will. But those are the principles. That's the principle I had as a baseball player, as a pitcher. Yeah. If they walked on my mound, I hit them. So I maintain that in comedy. Yeah, legally. And by legally, I mean in my. I've head. had a guy put a chair on stage before, and that's awkward. Like he put his chair on stage and sat behind me. But it was in Mississippi, so I wasn't going to open my yeah, mouth. Yeah, right. Because I was like, have fun. Do what you want to do. You do that, and then you find out like he's related to the owner. I just don't get why people. What, what gives him the right? I just don't get people. I think he could have stopped it there. That's a good point. That is a good point. I don't get people. You don't get people. What is Steve up to these days? Is he still alive? The guy who got hit. Yeah, I think there? he's. I think he's selling cars. No, I think he retired. I remember he was working. It was day. actually really cool. He was working, and his wife was like finishing school to get some degree, and then you know he was kind of like supporting the two of them, and then she got the degree and she got a really good job, and then Steve was like, "All right, I'm going to retire now." It was like a beautiful thing, man, for that Steve. Is, that's that's. I would love that. That's my ideal world: is a successful wife. Handles the, yeah. I don't lifting. understand this idea of men who don't want their wife making more money than them. Please make all of it. Yeah. Feel free. More than me. Don't make it. You can make all of it. Yeah. I, I don't have I don't have financial success in my bones. You do this. Take yeah. it on. I'll be here to cheer you I on. Am. I, I guess maybe I should. Is there a dating app of chubby men looking for 
uh, rich older women? Because I know that they well, have women looking for older men. Right. Yeah, it's actually started by the same guys who made Chubby Boy deliveries. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll just make I'll make a dating app with it. Right, you swipe right, and then it's you don't even have to exit the app. <laughs> Shit, you know. Or I no, just... that's actually a really good point. What you would do with the app is when you leave, and the woman, you know, if you deliver to like an old lady who's yeah. rich, it's like, hey, you know, option at the bottom. How how much would you fuck then? <laughs> and then like she can swipe to the right, and it's uh, a match, and yeah. then you go back. Wow, there yeah. there's some gray areas with the app. I think that the FDA needs to approve. We I don't know why the food it. people would need to. No, approve they'll it. be all over. The oh fire. wow, it sounded like an almost crack on your thing. No, it was my button. I'm I like, wonder who's be... going to be the first one. I mean, if we had a judge off weight, it would be me <laughs> to break a crate that we sit on. Maybe it'll be a guest. A guest. I think that'd be a really nice moment. That would be nice for the guests to break it, but I also worry that they'll get plastic shards in their ass. And I don't know if we have the podcast insurance to cover plastic crate shards. In you the know, ass. legally, if they get plastic shards we in their ass, them you in can the punch face. them in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good callback to that closing. I'm wondering. I think at a point we should get one of these brands on as a sponsor. I don't want to jinx it, but I think the people at all purpose iodized salt. I disagree. I think it's going to be purple or a pearl. What is that? Pearls, pearls. Pearls ripe olives. The medium. They're medium ripe. You don't want them full ripe. You just no. want them just ready. That's what, you know. Matt that's McConaughey what, said it, I think. People always say they're like, oh, man, I hate how, how ripe these are. Let me get <laughs> medium ripe so when you bite into it, it's kind of like biting into a, a, a banana peel. You an olive guy? No. I'm not an olive guy. I hate him. Are you a, you're a picky eater? No, it's just, I just don't like olives. I was a picky eater when yeah. I was a kid. Now I'll eat m- most anything that doesn't have olives in it. Yeah, as Mushrooms long as still kind of weird me out. As long as the ass doesn't have olives in it, Yeah, I'll exactly. It. You'll still eat it happily. I think this was a good first episode. Yeah, why I think not? the people learned us. They learned that you're the one who has a train of thought. I think if there's anything I could tell people who listen to me, it's that there will never be a concise train of thought. That's why you're fun, though. It will always be rambling. And I love that about you. I don't know how to not ramble. In any other world, by the way, like in any other setting, I'm the one who rambles. It's just comparatively speaking, I seem like I have coherent thoughts. Yeah, I think I was, I've always been a rambler. But then three years ago, I was in two, you know, two car accidents right. in like the span of three months. And I think whatever like little filter I had up there was knocked out completely. Right. And Off the old I, frontal lobe. Yeah. this I'm going to do this. I want to just end with this thought. It's yeah. so funny to me. I realized, so when I was in the car accident three years ago, right. uh, I only won a couple thousand dollars in the lawsuit, and my lawyer said it would be substantially more sure. if I had cuts on my face and not broken bones in my foot. Yeah. So I got a switchblade, and now I keep it in the center console of the car. Because next time I get hit, dude, I'm getting paid. Wouldn't that be great if, <laughs> like, like, a little fender bender, I just come out, my cheek is yeah. missing. Like, what happened? Yeah. Do you somehow, the guy's got, like, a camera footage, and it's just you <laughs> looking in the mirror, like. He kind of light taps me, and you just see me cutting my yeah, cheek. Right. Yeah, that is my uh, new favorite thought, that if I had just cut my face after he hit me, the drunk driver hits me, if I just cut my face instead of focusing on my broken toes. Yeah. That would be. a different life. We could have been maybe. In a whole deli and not just an aisle. We might have been able to earn we the might have been deli. in the deli. That'd be the shittiest. That would have been the greatest thing like in Batman if the Joker's like, you know how I got these scars? And he's like, how? <laughs> to win a, to win a lawsuit in to a car fuck accident. Geico. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> to make an extra two grand. <laughs> well, guys, this has been episode one of In the Aisle. This is Dan signing off with Jack. And uh, it was brought to you by uh, Savory Nongshim Soup. There we go. He said it. Have a good one, guys. Take care, guys. Bye.